right guys so last but not least we get on to the Aguila Tone Hammer DI box now I am kind of using this in place of an amp today um, the setup up to this point is what I would use normally uh, with the bands I play with um, and that covers a lot of ground if I have happen to play a gig and I can use my own amplifier then um, I won't be using this box um, and that's because the amplifier that I use is the Aguilar Tone Hammer 500 which is uh, basically exactly the same circuitry as is in this box with a 500 watt amplifier attached to it so why do I have this one because an awful lot of the time I don't get to use my own amp and that, that would be my preference I'd like to use my own gear more often um, but a lot of the time uh, we play small gigs or um, festival gigs where there's borrowed gear um, and I'll either be um, plugging straight into the PA system or I'll be playing through a borrowed amplifier. Now just a sideline on this one, the DI box, DI stands for direct injection and what that means is that the input, and I'm taking a normal line output here because that's what I'm plugging into the system you're hearing this through, um, but um, the circuitry in here will also convert my input into a um, XLR output, and that's like the microphone leads um, that you'll see, uh, and that's what will feed into a PA system. So direct injection is um, uh, not actually that old uh, an invention around sort of the 60s and 70s this started coming into um, use um, but a way of feeding uh, the signal of a bass which is actually too um, too weak to feed into um, a PA system directly converting that into a signal that the PA system can then amplify um, so this uh, box will do that um, and it will also uh, work with a borrowed amplifier um, in a way I'll describe in a second. Firstly, I just want to say um, the yes, uh, the circuitry in this, the preamp in this pedal is the same as is in my amp. So it's something that I'm very, very used to, and that's why I like using this. Um, when you borrow uh, an amplifier um, and you don't know how all the tone circuits and everything work, it's kind of difficult, especially when you've got a tight turnaround, to get that dialed into your sound. So this is a useful uh, tool that I've used many times uh, to overcome that. Now most amplifiers, not all, but most amplifiers will have an effects uh, loop. Um, and this is for plugging in um, effects pedals, but uh, within a loop on the amplifier. And this, the useful thing about this is that it normally comes between the preamp, which is where all the tone shaping circuitry comes, and the power amp, which is just where the actual amplification comes. This means, with a little bit of hacking, what we can do is take everything that I own, take this box here, plug it just into the effects return of the effects loop, and that means I bypass everything tone shaping in that amplifier and plug straight into the power amplifier, which essentially means that I have all the normal tone shaping tools that I have. I know how they work. I know what they sound like. I know how to tweak them. I can plug that just into a power amplifier and that's the amplification that I get. And that is so, 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 so useful and is why I got this little box in the first place. Um, as a DI box it works just as well um, I just don't have the the um, power amplifier behind me um, so that's the main reason I've got this this one here um, the other thing I wanted to go through this is um, just looking at um, EQ equalization um, and um, as you can see on the pedal here I haven't got that much going on on it um, it's pretty much flat and that would normally be where I start um, on any given amplifier, DI box, whatever I'm using. Um, basses normally come and you can play them and running them flat they sound good. All you need to do is a little tweak here or there depending on the room that you're playing in to get them sounding at their best. Now I fell into the same trap as many people when I started playing, boosted the bass all the way up. I, I actually cut all the treble out as well um, and I've got this glorious boomy dub bass tone 
but I couldn't hear what I was playing, nobody else could hear what I was playing, and I was making the room rattle without actually adding anything to the music. What I've learnt over the years is that much, much, much subtler um, use of equalization is much, much more effective. And that's what I tend to do. I'll start off flat, um, and this is in conjunction with the um, preamp before the pedal board as well, where I can add little touches in here and there, and it depends where I want to add that. Um, on the this one, this pedal, which is essentially simulating an amp for me, I'll normally add a little touch of bass. Um, I won't tend to add a lot of treble at that end. I'm more likely to add treble at this end. Um, the mid levels are also really useful. Um, if you want a bit more punch, but you don't actually want to make your the bass sound more boomy, then the mid frequencies are really useful to play with. Um, and um, yeah, so I tend to keep that fairly flat, just tweak it as I go. Um, and that's the final sort of step in my pedal board. Uh, so hopefully that's uh, been useful for you, uh, give you some ideas of uh, stuff to work with.